Okay, welcome back to my adventures in Thailand. This is part two of the hydroponic build. So for, first I thought I'd run through how the actual um, hydroponic system ended up looking. Um, I made a, a few, a, well, I made a load of adjustments, changed around a load of things. So I'm going to flip the camera around and show you exactly what I've done. And uh, then we might talk about, um, <laughs> then we might talk about seeds and stuff. That might be in part three though. So uh, keep watching, okay? Okay, so one of the first things I did was put the frame up, this frame here. I put that frame in and put this stuff, this uh, in Thailand we call it a salem. Okay, it's like a uh, sun shielding. It says on the packet that um, it uh, shields it by 50%. So these plants down here are now getting 50% less heat from the sun. Okay, so that was the first thing I needed to do. We can't have the sun beating down on these plants. These are young seedlings. If they get too much heat, they're just going to dry up and curl up and, um, you know, die and stuff. Or the leaves are going to dry, die. Um, so much better to have some sort of shading um, on the plants. Okay, that was the first, well, that was the first thing. And then the second thing I did was I put some of these in here. So these are sort of cross sections that um, uh, made the structure much more stable. So if I give it a wobble, it doesn't wobble anymore. So these things here are used in uh, making ceilings. They're just a bit of metal, but um, yeah, look, if I give that a wobble, much more sturdy now. I only had to put four in, I put two over that side and two over this side, and that has made it much more stable. I also did put another length in here, both ends. Um, I put another one in the center here. That went in as well. Um, one there and one there. And I actually did put some more center ones in. Um, I did, I made it much, much more stable, uh, much more sturdy. Um, and uh, yeah, spent a lot extra money on it. Um, okay, so that's, uh, that, that's um, made it sturdy and made, made mean, meant that it uh, stands up in the, the white rain and the wind. We've had, have had a few storms already and it has actually stood up to them. So um, yeah, pleased about that. So I kind of changed around the way that the water dis was delivered. Before we had a pipe here and that was connected to this one, went into there and then it went all the way down and came back up here and then went through and went around that. So the water went down and up every single run and it had to be perfectly level and it just you know it kind of didn't really work too well all the, the pipes were filling up kind of to the top here they were filling up to the top here and, and you know it just wasn't a good way of doing it we tried to balance it by putting tiles down and that didn't work so now we've got this kind of delivery system here which is if you can see that they're, they're um each one is pumping out its own amount of water for each one. The same amount of water on each one. So that's the way we change that. And then to come down here, so the water flows from there, down there, and then comes down all the way down here. And then we've got a, a T piece here. Now I've done this, this is an expensive way of doing things, I think. Let me sit down, show you what we've done, I've done down here. So I put a T piece in, this is two and a half inch, this is one inch pipe. This doesn't need to be done like this really. What I could have done is, is drilled a hole in, the, in here, in the cap end and had the water just pour out into a gutter, which could have been here and the gutter could flow, the water could flow back into the uh, pipe via a gutter rather than the pipe, but I wanted to have it this is more of an experiment to see if it works. Um, and so, although this setup is very expensive and I don't see myself making any money out of this setup, um, this is a potential sort of prototype of what I could potentially do in the future. Okay, but with longer pipes. In the future, what I'm looking at doing is, this is these are four meters long, and we've got about 20 holes per length so if we had 10 of these all lined up 
all locked together, all in one line, without any sort of T pieces or bends or anything like that. So just be 40 meters of pipe just going straight. And we would still only need this set up here. We'd only need to deliver the water there and then it had run down 40 meters of pipe and then we'd only have to have one of these down here. So we're trying out different things. We want to see how what is the most lucrative, what's, what's going to give us the best return, what's the easiest to grow, what's the quickest to grow. So I'm erring on the side of caution and I've been to the markets to have a look at um, the prices that things sell for. And I went to the market the other day and five of these Chinese cabbage were 25 baht. So that's five baht each. So this guy is selling them for five baht each. So he's, what, what price is he gonna be buying them at? He's not gonna be buying them at more than two or three baht per cabbage. So I'm thinking I'm only gonna get one or two baht per hole. We've got 120 holes, so that would be 240 baht back on this in a month turnaround. At, at the most, I'm, I think I'm really gonna get like 200 baht. Now, one of these cost 80 baht. So I've got five of them. That's 400 baht I've spent just on this, this bit here. These were 10 baht each. The whole setup has cost about 2,000 baht to to get this to the state that it's in. Each length of this is 120 baht, okay? So I think I'm only gonna get 240 baht, 200 baht in the first month. Return on investment, eventually I would get my money back, um, you know, but it would be very slow. Um, I don't know whether planting 120 of these every month would be worth the 240 baht I'm gonna get. Now, if we had 40 meters of this, so we had 10 lengths of these, and we had six in a row, I think I worked it out to be um, at 1,200 spots. If we can get two baht on each of them, if we had four of them, that would be five, nearly 5,000 5, spots. And if we can get two baht per spot then we're making 10,000 baht a month which and then it becomes worth doing i don't know how much work would it be involved in like propagating 10,000 of these let's have a look at how the uh, plants are getting on um so these are approximately well i'd say approximately that we started at the beginning of the month it's now the 28th or 29th so these are 28 days old from seed and uh, they don't look very big, I know. It's been painful to watch them because they do grow so slowly, but I can't expect anything else. But um, if we have a look at the roots that have developed from them, they're pretty good, look. Let's put have a look at here. That, look, that one's pretty good. Okay, look, there you go. So that's the roots that have grown and developed already. Which I think is pretty good. I mean, we have we do have two um, in a lot of them, which is a bit annoying. But I wanted to see if, um, you know, when we were germinating them, we put two in and then we've put two in like this. Now these two are going to get too big. But we want to see if two can grow from one hole. I don't think they can. I've also got lettuce. That's, that's um, a lettuce. That's a... Um, like a dark leafed lettuce. So yeah, they're, they're going okay. Um, and then I've got things that were only, so this one here was planted just two weeks ago. That's doing okay. Okay, so this, this one here is a lettuce and that's doing pretty well. Okay, so that's where we're at there. Um, yeah, we wanna find out if we can sort of grow two in one spot because obviously that would be double money. It work, it's working at the moment, but I don't think, once these get big, I don't think they're going to suffer having two there. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe you'll end up having two small ones instead of a big one. I don't know. Okay, so I'm also doing a thing called a deep water culture hydroponic system. These are two trays that I've kind of put together. 
I've had to learn how to weld to do this. That's in another video. But, um, yeah, if you'd like me to do a video on this, this is deep water culture. And this is what we've been also been doing. It's where the polystyrene just sits on the water and um, there's no kind of water flow. Um, we've got air pumps going in and uh, nutrients in there and stuff. So, yeah, if you want me to do a video on it, get back to me in the comments. Okay, so I know I said in part two I would do a germinating seeds video, but I thought I would just update everyone on how this system actually panned out. This way of doing things is a lot better than the way I did it before with um, the whole water going up each one and it down each one. That one wasn't going to work. So um, I just thought I'd do this one quickly and show you how it actually worked out, the stabilisation of the uh, base. Uh, the Salem at the top. If you're thinking about doing it, I think those things are quite important. So I will get a germinating seed video out to you as soon as I can or how we ended up trying to germinate the seeds. We've watched what, lots of videos on how to do it. So we'll show you how we've done it. We're not experts. Um, we're, still, we're still trying to learn, um, you know, and so we'll show you how we've started to do it. We've obviously had some success, as you can see. So uh, hopefully, you know, that may well continue. Okay, so if you've liked this video, press the like button, subscribe to see some more. If you want to see the propagation, you want to see how these end up uh, turning out. And uh, that's it from me. Bye for now.